Hey yo, it's Dino here. I hope everyone's doing well. We're here again with another crazy video full of crazy clips from all over the world. Let's hop right into it. Watch this active uh, bright light information three and they look like they're at like five zero zero or something just trying to figure it out. Okay, yeah, no, I, I haven't heard anything. I'll I'll check out with the next sector. And, and you said around uh, around fifty thousand feet, roughly, is that correct? Yeah, it looks like it. I mean, it's hard to it's hard to say, but yeah, the yeah, it keeps being like three to four really bright lights, and they kind of were in like a triangle formation, and then it looks like they will dipper for a bit, and then they disappear, and then they come back. Okay. Uh, okay. Thanks for that. I'll I'll just make a note, but yeah, I, I can't think of what that might be. Okay. Yeah, what about Air Canada 786? Yeah, 786, go ahead. Aircraft, uh, 12 o'clock, same altitude. Is that one ours? Yeah, Air Canada 786, uh, do you see these lights, 12 o'clock? See something, uh, flashing lights, uh, as long as that's 30, uh, 3600. Yeah, forming triangles, then flying away and coming back. Big bright light that's coming, uh, towards us, uh, slowly above us, 3600. Take for Canada 786. Do you have any traffic out there? Uh, no. I, I had one other report uh, 10 minutes ago from a, a Morningstar flight uh, east of Regina. Uh, reported the same thing. Uh, her best guess was was around somewhere around flight level 500, and uh, thought it might be somewhere north of, of Winnipeg. Um, so yeah. Where, so or do, do you have a guess as to what you might think the altitude is? Hard to tell, uh, just because the evening, I, I'd say she's probably pretty accurate, but they keep forming up in a triangle, and then it's pretty odd. Okay, yeah, no, that's the second report then, and yeah, there's no there's no active airspace, military airspace, anything like that we're aware of. Uh, I honestly have no idea what that might be. Oh, good. Morning, sir, 7060, from Tennis. Morning, sir, 7060. Are you still seeing the lights that you reported earlier? We're getting some reports uh, in Saskatchewan behind you now as well. It looks like those crafts from the X-Files that they were abducting people with to do uh, the genetic experimentation and what. Why do you stream? Why do you talk to the world? Why? My whole life philosophy has been based around being brainwashed since I was six years old, sitting in a church and not feeling like it was any productive use of time listening to a priest blab on about life, but he doesn't have any life experience. Some guy named Peter, you know, he's talking about TV Peter. shows. He's never even been with a woman before. How can you tell me anything about life and you haven't had any life experience? Going to school, doing the Pledge of Allegiance, sitting these things, taking Adderall every single day. They prescribed me, they said I had a disability. I felt like everything in my life was to keep me down since I was born. And they told me that there was something wrong with me and that's motivated me to do everything that I do. So the reason I started streaming is direct communication with my audience. I did videos for nine years, but that was slower. And now I can talk to 10,000 people every single day. I want to go spread the knowledge that I've learned and try to bring people out and teach them the same things that I've learned from being trapped inside the box and being suppressed my whole life. Well, all right, man. I mean, if that's what you want to do, then that's what you want to do. I'm not, I don't really know much about you except uh, bad things, so can't comment. Portals are real. This portal to the Fountain of Youth is located underneath the Space Mountain right here in the Disney World Resort in Florida, where we are right now. There are many natural portal systems located in North America, including under Sedona, California, the Great Lakes, Lake Tahoe, Florida, near locations of water. There's also an underground system that goes from California to Florida. These are natural earth portals that open up and can take you all over the world. There's a reason why the cabal built buildings, structures over these portals in these sacred spots, because they didn't want others to go into these portals to access the inner earth. There's a portal way, way underground in Disney World that goes to inner earth. This inner earth realm is a higher frequency realm, which is, has, has a water system that is highly ionically charged. It could be considered a fountain of youth because it changes your molecular structure when you drink it. Water used to come freely from this portal, flow from it, 
up into the surface or it could be accessed by anyone on the surface. This would, is what is known as the fountain of youth that Ponce de Leon was looking for. There's a group which can be considered the Maya breakaway civilization from the Maya. You know, there's that conspiracy theory that I heard from everybody about how the fountain of youth is underneath Disney and uh there's a video about it right there it's crazy i don't know what to think about that he's talking about there's total systems from disney to disney and the fountain of youth is down there i don't know man Oh, that's pretty wild looking. Somebody <laughs> made a portal out of shopping carts. That's pretty cool though, I mean, they can't do too much, so I mean, it's nothing to really be afraid of with those. guys are so lucky that was very close he was in shock that whole video this is the world's most evil theater and has made people leave in the middle of the night welcome to the fowler theater located in fowler indiana one of the most creepy and beautiful theaters in the world the decades and even centuries of history has led this place to be the most haunted in the world and i'm going to be explaining everything but first of all, if you see us live, make sure to tap in because we will be live ghost hunting. Before the cedar was built, there was a massive hotel where people would be there in and out almost every single day. And the guy by the name of Dick Velastos actually tore half of the hotel down so he could build this beautiful theater. There's actually no documented history of what has happened at the hotel, so some of the history may be correlated to why this place is so deeply haunted. One of the former workers slash owners by the name of Danny actually unalived himself. We don't know if this happened at the theater or somewhere else, but he deeply loved this theater and he would be here almost every single day greeting all of the customers. People say that in the upper floor of the theater that there is a very evil and dark presence that likes to touch you and pull your hair and just gives people an uncomfortable feeling. Cool. That's a pretty cool story about the theater. Be careful who you watch on the internet. Today I was streaming and some bigger streamers watched me while I was talking about God and their viewers were completely disrespecting God. And it all started off with this guy. He said Jesus was imaginary, but it isn't what he said. Obviously people who don't believe in God are gonna make the craziest statements. I want you guys to read his name, Party Animal Dev. This dude is a developer for a pretty big game that's gonna be coming out very soon. Many of the games that we play and the people that we watch are completely gonna go against God. For example, there was a guy in my chat who was a big streamer by the name of Zoyo completely disrespecting God. Now this is a scary part. These people are far bigger creators than me. But in the case of this scenario, the streamer who was watching me said I should take it as a joke. You can believe whatever you want. I'm not there to judge him. I just want to hear what he is saying. Like the trolling, it's it's Twitch. You're, you're a streamer, brother. You gotta, you gotta make shit a joke. The scary part is they have more of an influence and they have a bigger community than me. So what are they putting into people's minds? I mean, true. I, I agree with the words you're saying, however, uh, as somebody who used to stream on Twitch all the time, um, there are some pretty terrible trolls all over the platform.
I don't know about that. They're like our stars, or angels. I don't know. It looks like water to me. They took our job. They took our job. They took your job. They took our job. They took your job. They took your job. your job. It is pretty wild looking, though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> And so that all of this comes forward. Looks like something straight out of a science fiction uh, movie. You get a little breeding. Like that. That's pretty sick. What is this minority report? Who in the world needs that? Kinetic Blocks Project. It's actually what MIT calls a pin-based shape display, which is an array of computerized pins that move in physical space according to spatial data. That data is fed in by a Kinect camera hovering above it, allowing it to create 3D representations. Basically what that means is if a Kinect sees a hand, it creates a hand in 3D. With Kinetic Blocks, MIT has ratcheted up what the display can do to make it capable of building stuff. If it's fed the right data, it can manipulate blocks, rotating them and even stacking them on top of each other. Things get extra cool when it uses magnetic blocks, which leads to even more complex structures. I'm just saying, I don't, I don't think I need my tables to move stuff around for me. I'm sure by now you have all heard about this guy. And I'm also sure that you've heard about this. And I'm also sure that you've heard about, as far as that goes, that he was hearing voices in his head. Do some research and look up voice to skull. And then let me know what you think about this situation. The hidden agenda will truly shock you. <laughs> Can you name three countries? Um, no. <laughs> Canada, that's one? Yeah. Um, Arkansas? Sure. Arkansas, yep, yeah, one more. Sure. I don't know. Is oh. it? Uh, I know. North Carolina? North Carolina, yes, you got it right. Congrats. Okay, okay, nice job. Now, can you tell me how many dimes makes a dollar? Twenty final answer, what do you think? I don't know man, that's pretty sad. That makes me upset to see that. I'm glad he streamed that live, but like, dang dude. But the spirits, multiple and plural, that the demonic side of the music industry is very real too. That's how I came to God, through understanding the demonic side. So I think the industry has um, a way of just taking control of you and many self-destruct uh, scenarios. I was certainly interested in being mysterious. It gave me a character. It gave me some substance that I could hold on to. And why I did that or why I, I portrayed myself in, in those ways, uh, I don't know. Maybe I was trying to prove something out of a boy band scenario, perhaps, but also, it intrigued me, the world, the darker side of the world, the Ouija boards, uh, Ouija boards, uh, seances, all that kind of spiritual tar tarot card reading, all that kind of stuff really got a hold of me. Well, when I look at the, the way the industry um, has the ruling over music, now, of course, not all music is bad. By all means, it's not. 
In uh, terms of the lyrics, and the, is that what you mean? Or do you mean the industry itself, people, the big players in the industry? Both, lyrically and both big players. Both, um, I've been in rooms at the, the top of the top, which albums are prayed over demonically. Music is prayed over demonically. Um, that goes out to the world, goes out to the radio stations, goes out to the public. And when you see that stuff and know that stuff, it's frightening. What do you mean by that, Shane, prayed over demonically? So uh, rituals, ceremonies, everything to bring, um, uh, to give light to, to, to the devil, to Satan. It's, it's a satanic music industry. That's majority of what it is. Do you, do you mean figuratively or do you mean literally you've been in... Literally, yes. And can Not you figuratively. Can you share what those albums were? Um, were they your albums? No, they weren't were they... our albums, no. They were not Boy's Own albums. Um, so that's what I mean by not every music is that. But it was on the stepping stone to that. So you're going back to the 1993s into 2000s. And then um, if you look at what the music is today, the industry is today, uh, for all your Sam Smiths to your Dojo Cats to your Beyonce's to, they are so demonic, it's unbelievable. And we can't, it's in front of us. And um, it's something that we uh, kind of go, oh, it's just music. But it really isn't. It's absolutely taken over the world, taken over our children and taken over. Ooh wee, he's not wrong though. He's definitely not wrong. You can buy this flying car in 2024. The Chinese electric vehicle manufacturer Xpeng Motors unveils its new flying car that can travel on the road and in the air. The vehicle is equipped with a foldable dual rotor mechanism, and it helps the car to transform from normal mode to flying mode. To enhance flying car safety, the company also developed a multi-parachute rescue system. The cost of this flying car is $137,000. Bro, you won't catch me buying a flying car from i mean even in the in the disney film pinocchio it's unbelievable the the pub scene he talks about yeah bringing the boys to pleasure island and then he starts whispering what happens to the boys and the fox freaks out he's like oh, but but and he goes no 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 they don't come back as boys <laughs> And I take them to Pleasure Island. Uh, Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island. All right, guys. Here are the updates on what's going on right now. Below 40 degrees temperature in Edmonton, Canada. Look at the doorknob, okay? That is inside the house. Inside. I have never in my entire life seen a doorknob freeze from the inside. That is another level of cold. Now, while that's happening, this is what's happening in Florida. That is terrifying. Now, the wind in this video is on another level. Now, besides what happened in 2020, this is probably the second thing that we all get to experience at the same time. Because right now, everywhere in the United States is super crazy. Florida having this crazy thunderstorm, Tennessee with the flood, New Jersey with the flood, New Hampshire, you know what I'm saying? Chicago with the winter storm, like it's crazy. Texas just had a winter storm. As I'm recording this, like this is how it's looking right now. Outside my window in Chicago. Yeah, the weather has been pretty crazy lately, everywhere. AI is artificial intelligence. But what exactly is the relation between intelligence and consciousness? Now, intelligence is the ability to solve problems, to win a chess, to invest money, to drive a car. This is intelligence. Consciousness is the ability to feel things like pain and pleasure and love and hate and sadness and anger and, and so many other things. Now, in humans and also in other mammals, intelligence and consciousness actually go together. We solve problems by having feelings. But computers are fundamentally different. 
they are already more intelligent than us in at least several narrow fields, but they have zero consciousness. They don't feel anything. When they beat us at chess or go or some other game, they don't feel joyful and happy. If they make a wrong move, they don't feel sad or, or angry. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. It's pretty crazy to think about though, like a lot of people are afraid that AI is going to take over, but at the same time, like if we let AI take over, it's completely on us. It's a Tesla bot folding laundry. This is going to blow your mind. The coolest invention of 2024 is a device that literally turns air into water. Debuting just two days ago at the CES, the Consumer Electronics Show, is a device called the Water Cube that takes the moisture out of the air, filters it, and produces up to 110 gallons of pure drinkable water for your home per day. You can think of it like solar panels, except instead of using the sun to create power, you're using the air to create water. According to Genesis Systems, the company that produces this unit, this technology has been available to the government for years, but this is the first time that it is available to consumers. And you can get one for $20,000. As you can see here, it looks like a futuristic air conditioning unit. It comes with the technology to filter the air, turn the moisture into water, along with two 55-gallon tanks to store the water. It can be powered by conventional energy, solar energy, and can even be controlled by an app on your phone. We know that water is one of the most important resources and also one of the scarcest resources. So you no longer have to go out and look for a plot of land with a well if you want to produce your own water. There's no doubt that this is going to be a game changer. You can use this anywhere in the world including off grid but i'm curious to hear what you think about all of this down below so it's a giant dehumidifier for outdoors basically when we talk about people that got done the absolute dirtiest in history we got to talk about lindy chamberlain creighton you might not know the name but you definitely know these four words dingo ate my baby now, because let's actually talk about how messed up this was. So this family goes to Iris Rock with their nine-week-old Azaria. Then Azaria disappeared with parents Lindy and Michael obviously reporting it, with Lindy saying that a dingo had dragged her out of the tent. That's a dingo, by the way. Officials searched for her, and the only trace of her they could find was a bloody jumpsuit, which would make sense because, you know, dingo. Which the coroner originally agreed with, but here's where the story of a baby getting buried by dogs somehow gets darker. A different coroner was involved, and they said that someone had purposely cut up the jumpsuit after they, you know, life-retired Azaria, which I thought they settled because, you know, dingo. Courts ended up finding Lindy guilty in the very first degree of Casey anthony her own daughter and then trying to stage it as a dingo attack. And you know the courts were on one because one of the pieces of evidence was blood in her car that ended up not even being blood. Trial basically got the TMZ treatment and public opinion had convicted her before she even got to court. They even tried saying she was guilty because she didn't grieve enough. Like, like you don't look sad enough so you definitely murked your baby, right? So Lindy got life in prison and Michael was charged as an accessory. Even had to give birth in prison. Except four years later some dude fell to his finale and while looking for him they found a Zarya's missing jacket right by a den of i don't even need to say it really long story short but lindy ended up being exonerated but dingo ate my baby would get meme to death so imagine your baby gets turned into a chew toy people blame you for it they say you're guilty because you're not sad enough whole time dingo really did eat your baby just for it all to end up being a punchline i'm not gonna lie i'm a peaceful person but i'd have to turn joker like ain't no way i'm getting my restitution dingo got the oj simpson stimulus package bro got off scot king free that that's wild that is absolutely wild dude what Let's take rap music. Let's take okay. it. The same people who own the labels own the prisons. So, literally the same people? Literally the same people who own the labels own private prisons. So, so, 
you know, it, it seems really kind of suspicious, if you want to say that word, that, you know, the records that come out are really geared to push people. Mm. It's true, though. Flippy the Chef makes Spud spectacular. This automated grill gives the meat its sizzle as this restaurant goes robotic. For this burger, it would take about 120 seconds. Cali Express by Flippy is the world's first AI-powered eatery. There's new technology outside the kitchen, too. A cheeseburger. Order kiosks use facial recognition to remember you, your favorite food, and how you like to pay. Then watch the robots work, no humans required. We can't get enough people to come out to work on fryers and, and grills and their dangerous jobs. And this uh, automation helps solve a lot of those issues. Hello, 62% of restaurants report being understaffed. Industry experts say most of those unfilled jobs could be done by robots. And in California, where the minimum wage for most fast food workers will soon be $20 an hour, fewer workers equals cost savings. Dan Ives is with Wedbush Securities, a wealth management firm. Once the minimum wage went to 20, that's the bell going off. More and more focus on spending on AI. Because look, that's inflationary. That's the problem. You can't necessarily pass all that to the consumer. Flippy can cook 250 pounds of French fries an hour. The burger bot a hundred patties. Now, these restaurants are very, very busy at peak times and every second that gets added to somebody waiting in drive through is, is a lost revenue opportunity for that restaurant. Is it costing people their jobs? That's uh, not what we've seen and uh, it's really here to, to help people. Humans at Cali Express will put the finishing touches on orders. For customers, the price of the meals are competitive. As for taste, is it going to affect the quality and the taste? I would say yes, in a good way, because now each burger is being cooked precisely the same way every time. Time will tell whether AI takes over kitchens everywhere. That will be up to the public to chew on. Mm. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's a little bit scary to think about, but it's really cool. I'd like to know how well that food gets made. If I felt there were any way in the world that I could stand before my constituents and say, I believe that it's possible to come up with a group of people who have no political bias whatsoever, who will simply sit down in a room and magically create districts, I'd be behind it. I'd be behind it 100%. But those people don't exist. Now, if you recognize that guy, it's because you saw him about 10 minutes ago reassuring everyone that his intent in drawing districts was to gain partisan advantage for Republicans. Now, there is actually a Supreme Court case coming up involving a redistricting in Wisconsin that was so partisan, a lower court struck their maps down, and the Supreme Court may, for the first time, actually issue a clear ruling putting limits on partisan gerrymandering. So all of our hopes are now in the delicious claws of Justice Neil Gorsuch. <laughs> But even without a ruling, many experts argue we should simply be taking redistricting out of the hands of politicians and give the task to independent commissions. And that's a pretty good idea. In fact, a handful of states already do some version of that. And it's not perfect. It is tough to completely remove partisan biases, a fact that one state lawmaker brought up to shoot the idea down. So he's essentially arguing, nobody's unbiased, so let's use me, the most brazenly biased man in the universe. <laughs> which is pretty much arguing no babysitter is perfect, so let's just use Slender Man. <laughs> but while independent commissions might not be perfect, they would definitely be better. They would be better, but they definitely would be nowhere near perfect. Alors, on vient de mettre pause au film. Ça a couru à l'étage. Et ça, ça bouge de ouf. Lucas, tu vas voir. That's what I want, dude.
That was pretty creepy, man. I don't know that I'd have walked towards the noise, though. You can get paid by Elon Musk to put this implant inside your brain. Yep, big news this week as Neuralink, Elon Musk's company, has completed its first human trial. If you're not familiar, Neuralink is a small brain implant that allows you to control your phone or your computer just with your thoughts. With the implant in your brain, you never have to type again, never have to move, you can just think and it will do. And Neuralink is currently looking for more people to try it out. Now I should clarify that the first users of Neuralink will be those who are paralyzed, who have lost limbs, who are visually impaired, because obviously off the bat, this technology is most impactful for those with disabilities. I mean, imagine if Stephen Hawking could communicate faster than an auctioneer. While we're still a couple years away from this being publicly available to everyone, the Neuralink has officially entered humans' brains. Hmm. That bothers me. I do not like that. But I, I see California being hit with a devastating earthquake. Oh, you do? Right after the fucking tornado. The tornado is going to hit us? The tornado hit hits, wipes out Houston, and all of a sudden we get this crazy ass 11 point earthquake. 11 point earthquake. You You're fucking with me, bro. I just told you. 11? So when it happens, it's going to be. It's going to be devastating. That's the big one? Yeah. That's. We're a bit. I mean, to be honest, we've wow. been owed. I oh, know wow. that's it's gonna be a game it's changer. Song. It'll be it'll be tap, go, tap, delete, delete. it'll go down in history, and it's gonna create uh, a tidal wave that that's is four hundred feet high, and it's called Big John. I've been getting the name John. Where is it? How far is it gonna go in? Four hundred uh, feet. I know. It's four football fields. Um, if you want beachfront property, I would probably invest in Arizona. Y'all think he's capping? I mean, there are some pretty big, wild predictions right there. He's talking about an 11 point earthquake and a tornado that's going to destroy Houston altogether. I don't know, man. 400 foot tidal wave. I don't know. It's a little wild. Some migrant families will soon be given prepaid credit cards to buy food and baby supplies. The mayor's office says the city is partnering with Mobility Capital Finance to launch a more cost-effective program. Right now, the city has contracts with food services who provide non-perishable food boxes to shelters. They will start with 500 migrant families with children in short-term hotel stays. The cards can only be used at bodegas, grocery stores, supermarkets, and convenience stores. We're just giving this migrant population more free stuff uh, at the expense of New York City taxpayers. In a statement, the mayor's office says in part, quote, not only will this provide families with the ability to purchase fresh food of their culturally relevant diets and the baby supplies of their choosing, but the pilot program is expected to save New York City more than $600,000 per month or more than $7.2 million annually. I'm not going to be thankful that a program that was bloated and inefficient is somehow uh, cheaper to just give away free money to people in the hopes that they feed themselves. According to the New York Post, this pilot program will cost the city $53 million. The amount loaded on the card will depend on the family size. They're deflecting attention away from their incompetency um, and they're not holding accountable the people that had prior contracts. Paramalu is with artists, athletes, and activists. He says the Adams administration is setting up the migrants for failure. Purchasing food at the supermarket is not cheap anymore. And on top of that, they don't have kitchens, so how are they going to purchase the food that they want? The families who get these credit cards will be required to sign an affidavit swearing they will only use them for food or baby supplies. Those who violate the terms could be kicked out of the program. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. No comment. Mm -hmm. They're freaked out so bad by that. It's kind of funny. If people are finding contamination, wouldn't they come here to they address it? Here, yeah. But nothing's being done. What? 
I, I, you know, I don't know. We're, no. we're investigating this, and there's a, there's a huge concern that people are getting sick. Well, I mean, we've interviewed several people. We've been here for a week. Yeah. So there, you're saying there is no concern? I mean, there is a concern. Many people in the county have, have told us that they've addressed specifically with you yeah. this very issue, and they're saying nothing's they're, they're being saying done. That barium and aluminum is being dumped out of airplanes because they can see it in the, in the, okay. in the comp okay. trails going over. Okay. Here, here's my question. If there's aluminum contamination, which is very toxic, is that something that you're supposed to deal with? If it's in the air. It appears that there is contamination. Does that concern you? I mean, personally. Get, it doesn't appear to me that there's contamination. Does it concern you? If there is, you're, you're flat out denying. It doesn't, it doesn't appear to me that there's contamination. Okay. If somebody could prove that there was, would you be willing to look into this? No. no. So even if they did air quality tests, I mean, who would have to do the test for you to um, recognize that it would be a problem? Uh, the uh, federal government is doing the testing. They have. That wasn't his question. Well, they they would have to do the, the test. The reason no way that we could do the test. The reason we asked for you is because many people told us that this information has been presented to you. Many people also believe that you're involved with a cover up. And that concerns a lot of people. I uh, know there's proof out there they're never gonna take responsibility for it. There's videos of people literally filling up the tanks of stuff that they're spraying and showing you how they spray them and when they spray them and the button and when it's just all there, man. Nearly 1 million people are without power in California after an insane storm happened this week and will continue for the next few days. As these storms have ripped across California over the past few days, now officially nearly 1 million people are without power as the number sits at just above 900,000. California has now declared a state of emergency after the hurricane force winds have had gusts up to 60 mile an hour, where on the coastline, they've even had them between 80 and 100 miles per hour. Major life-threatening flooding is possible along the southern slopes of the mountains in Southern California, as the storm could also produce powerful waves along the coastline. Now, this was crazy when I read it. First ever hurricane alert issued for Central California as 97% of state's population put under a flood warning as the that cyclone prepares to batter LA and millionaire playground of Santa Barbara. And this is not expected to stop. These are the rain totals from now Sunday all the way into Tuesday with you see some of these areas getting up to 15 inches of rain. Guys, if you live in California or know somebody that does, please share this video with them. Oh man, look at that. That's crazy. Hope you guys were good out there. This is the most haunted forest in America, the Freetown State Forest. In the 1970s, a young girl was found tied to a tree here. She had been assaulted and left for dead by a killer. And in that same decade, a cult held devil-worshipping ceremonies out here and committed a number of murders. One of these murder victims' heads was found, but her body was never located. It's possible it's still in these woods. Bigfoot calls this place home along with spirits, demons, and Ronald Reagan saw a UFO here. Yo, that is terrifying, dude. Like, the buildings just fell. The whole ground shaking, dude's doing this, holding his bike. Like, no way, man. No way. You won't even catch me visiting in Japan. 
Let's revisit this problem or this situation that's taking place in commercial real estate. Eastream Media is finally starting to report on it. Little late to the party, but at least they showed up. Oh, banks are getting robbed again as real estate losses mount. So what do we know? We know that during COVID, a lot of businesses started operating remotely. Many of the employees became comfortable working from home. So if they can do their job from home, there's no need to go to our office. So those office spaces are now vacant and there is no tenants to fill them. In time, the Fed was rapidly raising interest rates to try to fight off inflation. Inflation they created, which is crazy, but that's a conversation for another day. Rising interest rates while losing tenants put the landlords in a bad spot. With interest rates rising, landlords have to pay double on their loans. While losing tenants after tenants, there's no way they're going to be able to do that. So we, many people are predicting defaults like we have never seen before. And this means big troubles for the banks because majority of the bank's investments are in commercial real estate. I don't think a lot of people understand how the banking system works. When you put your money in a bank, your money don't just sit there. The bank invests your money into the economy or into real estate. When they start losing on their investment, that puts you at risk. Yeah. The depositor at risk. Yeah. It does put the depositor at risk. Oh boy. I didn't think of it that way. This image was taken on January 29th, 2024 of a recently built home nearing completion on Jupiter Island. Within a week, there has been massive coastline erosion. This is the view of the same exact home just a few days later on February 10th. The sudden erosion has exposed the pool pylons and some of the pylons that support the home structure. In this video clip, you can see that the recently filled pool is now empty of its water as a result of the compromised pipes from the erosion. Time will tell if these sudden large ocean swells will ease or have immediate further drastic impacts on the coastline. Besides the impacts to the residents, what about nesting habitat for the upcoming sea turtle nesting season? Questions arise. Should home building setback lines be revisited? Should the sand be dredged back from the ocean? What is the impact to the reefs and marine life inhabiting those reefs just offshore? What are your thoughts? Comment below. Seems like the way that they built that pool ruined that entire little cutout there. That's what it seems like. For the first time since his arrest, Jesus Rivas Figueroa appeared before a judge Saturday, the 15-year-old with a blank look on his face as the cameras flash. <laughs> on Friday, the teen's mother wailed as U.S. Marshals took him into custody, tears streaming down his face. Authorities say the mother fled the city with her son, who was wanted for a shooting. Rivas Figueroa was found hiding in a closet inside a home in Yonkers. The defendant has demonstrated that he is an extreme flight risk and is facing a long sentence of incarceration on this strong case. Prosecutors telling the judge who ordered the 15-year-old to be held without bail. He believed that he could try to kill a New York City police officer. Prosecutors say this security video shows the teen now charged with attempted murder in all white, pulling a 45 caliber handgun and firing it at a store employee after he was caught shoplifting in Times Square Thursday night. The bullet missed the worker, but hit a tourist in the leg. Investigators say Rivas Figueroa then ran from the cops and recklessly fired into crowds of people at a police officer. The Police Benevolent Association at court Saturday saying there's a reason these crimes are being committed with ease. That is the message being sent by the courtrooms that if you get arrested, you're back on the streets of the city in New York. Where did he even get the gun in the first place? That's really my main question. Hmm. The Middle East region has turned into a living hell. Iran's plans to attack U.S. bases in Iraq and Syria with its armed proxies. Israel's war with Hamas in Gaza. The tension created by the Houthis in Yemen in the Red Sea. All of these have brought tensions in the region to its peak. 
nowadays striking news about the war between Israel and Hamas, which is seen as one of the most important cornerstones in resolving the crisis in the region, has started to come to the agenda. It was reported that the effects of the war, which reached from the southern Gaza Strip to Egypt's Rafah settlement borders in recent days, caused a great tension in the region today. Regional sources said that Egypt issued a warning to Israel that an IDF attack on Rafah on the Gaza-Egypt border would force Gazan civilians into Egypt, leading to Egypt's withdrawal from the peace treaty it signed with Israel in 1979. Immediately after these warnings, Egypt launched a very remarkable preparatory phase in the Rafah border area. Large numbers of Egyptian troops began pouring into the area. Let's go to the most critical center of the war and discover the full impact of Egypt's preparations on the Israel-Hamas war, the latest developments in the region, and what we can expect in the coming days. We have already mentioned that immediately after Egypt's withdrawal from the peace treaty it signed with Israel in 1979, there was a great deal of activity in Rafah. There literally is always something going on over there. Did you catch the alien commercial during the Super Bowl? Reports of flying saucers are nothing new. These are routine sightings, not isolated events. Are you seeing that? It's spinning. It's all swirling. Oh my God. They're all against the wind. All against the wind. <laughs> There was a historic hearing today on Capitol Hill and an unprecedented bipartisan push for UFO transparency. <laughs> That's wild. Nobody cared until it popped up on their freaking phones and TVs. Anyways, guys, that's another video we could drop in the archives. Thank you all for hanging out. Go ahead and smash that like and subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that way you know next time I'm uploading a video. And I hope that all of you have a great rest of your day, afternoon, evening, morning, whatever it might be for you. Until next time, peace.